Winter storms are common across many sections of the United States, particularly in Minnesota and the rest of the upper Midwest. You'll see snow plows and other snow removal equipment along our roadways before, during, and after snowfall events during snow and ice season, the winter months, typically between mid-October and mid-April. During this program, we'll learn about winter work zones and how MnDOT removes snow and ice, the hazards that motorists and snowplow operators face, and what you can do to drive safely when snowplows are present. Every snowstorm is different, and we approach each one accordingly. MnDOT has responsibility for the nearly 31,000 snow and ice lane miles of trunk highways across the state. Trunk highways are U.S. state and interstate routes. Snow and ice lane miles include bridges, ramps, shoulders, and in certain areas, sidewalks and other pedestrian facilities. MnDOT maintenance staff constantly monitor winter weather from a number of sources. Detailed forecasts let MnDOT supervisors know when storms arrive so they can take proactive measures to address them by making sure the right amount of staff is called in and that all necessary equipment and support crews are available and ready to respond. Often, on the way to begin their regular routes, several plow drivers team up and plow some of the busier or multi-lane roads in the area. This team approach is called tandem plowing, and it's a very effective and efficient means of addressing snow and ice. When two or more trucks plow in tandem, it can often treat an entire segment of roadway in a single pass. Early on in the life of a snowstorm, there isn't much accumulation on the road. The goal here is to keep ahead of the storm as much as possible and to apply material to the most troublesome spots, most often bridge overpasses. As the storm intensifies and the rate of snowfall increases, wind speed or direction may increase or change and visibility may be reduced as plow operators continue to fight the storm's effects on the roadway. Each truck has a plow on the front and a wing on the side that swings out roughly 4 to 10 feet as snow is moved off to the side of the road. During some storms, it may be difficult to see the plows through the snow. Remember, MnDOT snow plows are orange. They feature flashing lights and often create what's known as a snow plow. All snow plows can create snow clouds. During tandem plowing, snow clouds can actually hide the plows at the front of the path. Driving into a snow cloud can easily result in an extremely hazardous situation for both you and the snow plow driver. Can you tell what's behind this snow cloud? Quick, you don't have much time to respond. It's a three vehicle crash with the occupants assessing the damage outside of their vehicles. Let's look at that again in slow motion. What if the crash had been only mere feet closer to your lane? Would you have had time to stop? or would you have been vehicle number four? A single vehicle crash as a result of driving too fast for conditions can quickly and easily be compounded into a multi-car crash if other motorists were to drive into a snow cloud. During the brief period of time filming this particular section of freeway, we saw several crashes, and many appeared to have been caused by motorists driving into a snow cloud and finding themselves involved in the crash. Most crashes can be avoided if you remember two very important things during snow and ice season. Don't crowd the cloud and drive for the conditions. At intersections and other areas prone to slipperiness, such as ramps and bridge overpasses, you're very likely to find trucks spreading salt and other materials at low speed. If you get too close, you could find your car covered in these materials, so it's important to keep your distance. And just because you see plows out on the roads, don't assume there won't be any slippery areas. It takes time for materials to take effect. Snow plows often travel at slower speeds than the rest of traffic, and snow and ice traffic conditions can force them to slow down more rapidly or even unexpectedly. On a yearly average, 35 MnDOT snow plows are rear-ended in collisions. Rush hour on rural freeways usually is fairly light, and traffic moves along at a steady rate. As we head toward the Twin Cities, we'll focus on snow ridges and icy road conditions. Snow ridges are common where entrance ramps and exit ramps join the freeway. 
Snow ridges form as plows push snow off the freeway. They also can be formed when plows move off a roadway's center line to provide room for other traffic. Snow ridges can cause you to lose control of your vehicle and they're particularly hazardous when they occur in icy areas. While most crashes don't involve snow plows, enough of them do take place with plows that you must give special consideration and use extreme caution. Snow plows are extremely large vehicles that weigh more than 20,000 pounds, a full 10 tons, empty. A fully loaded snow plow outweighs a passenger car by 17 to 1, so in a car versus snow plow collision, it's the car and its occupants that suffer the greatest damage. Snow plows feature wings on the right side, while others have the wing on the left side. This can be confusing to motorists, since crash statistics illustrate the result of what happens when drivers try to pass the plow and end up hitting the wing. Remember that the wing is usually positioned on the same side of the truck as the direction the snow is being thrown. But take note that wind and snow clouds themselves can make it difficult to determine where the wing is located. Don't ever try to pass a snow plow. You may not know upon which side the wing is located, and you can't see whether or not the road is clear ahead of the plow. Snow plows are there to provide you with a less treacherous roadway ahead of you, so let them lead the way. As we enter the Twin Cities metro area, we see perhaps the ultimate in tandem plowing. Five plows clearing one side of the freeway to the other from shoulder to shoulder. When you come up behind a situation like this, just be patient and follow behind. Outside the Twin Cities metro area, we find a road grader cleaning up the shoulders and turn lanes. Graders move much more slowly than snow plows or other traffic. Watch out for them as well, and again, don't follow too closely. Road graders have a blind area extending behind the grader itself that's large enough to hide a car. If the grader backed up with you in the blind area, you could be in for an unpleasant experience. Once the storms have moved on and the roadways become clearer and drier, it's time for crews to finish the job and get to what's called cleanup work. Even when the main roadway itself is clear, you still may need to be prepared to see plows and other equipment and reduce speed. In these cases, crews could be finalizing work on turn lanes, shoulders, ramps, and actual piled up snow with box trucks and oversized snow blowers. Winter in Minnesota means that before you know it, it'll be time for crews to get back on the roads and start the process all over again when the next storm rolls in. Over the last few moments, we've had a chance to see plows at work. Remembering this information as snow and ice season hits can help you make winter driving safer for all of us. Don't crowd the plow. Give them room to work and always reduce your speed under slippery conditions. In closing, let's take a look at a brief public service announcement that demonstrates the importance of driving safely around snow plows. For your safety and ours, please slow down, stay back, stay alive. This message brought to you by the Minnesota Department of Transportation.